everybody, welcome back to Julia in the Garden. Here we are inside today, getting ready to plan my potager or kitchen garden for the year 2022. So I've got my uh, copy of my potager plan here, and I did this last year as well for the 2021 gardening year, so I will link that here. And you can also check out my videos from throughout the year because it doesn't always go, in fact it never goes exactly as I planned. But here we are, I already started by filling in with a pen uh, some of the perennials that are in there. I'm not going to necessarily label all of them, but I've got some perennial herbs in here, my elder tree here, my asparagus over here, uh, my quince tree is here. If I think of other things, I will put them in as we go. If you are new here, welcome. I am Julia. I am in Vermont in the United States. Uh, now I'm going to be a little bit repetitive from last year's video because that's just the nature of this, so I apologize. But again, um, this is a layout of my potager. It is um, pretty square on the directions. So over here is north, here is south, here is east, and here is west. And my printer actually cut off a little bit of this, so this is here as well. Um, these are all inside beds. It is fenced, and these will have gates. <laughs> they had gates for a little bit, they broke, now they don't again, but they will have gates in, in these spots. Um, so that's that. So this is not just, uh, I'm not just coming up with this like completely on the fly right now. I have been thinking about my plan for months, really, since I was gardening last season. And um, I've made some notes, so I'm just gonna try to transfer them in some sort of, uh, way on here and then I will use this when I'm planting so let's get started here um, let me first the first thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna keep using my pencil for this because I use pencil because things change and I like to mark when they change or maybe you know I'll wake up in the middle of the night and be like ah, I need to do that differently so I get scared using pen in this in this phase so I don't um, but here I actually already planted garlic in this bed in the fall so that's my garlic this year and this bed I actually planted um, spring bulbs so uh, you can see that in my bulb video which I think was the last one I put up and um, so there's mostly tulips but some hyacinths and alliums as well in there which I'm hoping to use for cutting so I'm really excited about that so since I'm back here let me keep going because this is going to be a bed for my ranunculus and anemones so we'll have flowers here in the spring and then um, these ones will come out sooner I'm not gonna leave them there I will pull them out and then put other things in um, so I actually have some thoughts on that and these will come out too so all three of these beds um, will probably this one the garlic usually comes out at the end of July. These will probably be out. So I haven't grown tulips here before, so we'll have to see. I mean, I think by the end of June, I imagine all those would be pretty well done, if not earlier. And these, we'll have to see, because I expect them to bloom here in June, and so we'll have to see how long they go. But either way, at some point, I will be filling stuff back in here. So one thought I had was to put um, some more sunflowers and basil to use for cutting back here. You will notice that this year, more of space is going to flowers. So <laughs> that's gonna happen. I still do have a lot of herbs and fruits and vegetables in here as well. So do not worry, but I am really enjoying the cut flowers. So I think it really is making it more of a potager in the sense of the word, because my understanding of it is that it's a mix of fruits and vegetables and herbs and flowers that's also just aesthetically pleasing as it is designed. So that is my goal. Um, it's kind of, we're always striving to get there. Let me keep going. This is going to be my brassica bed back here. Last year I had, I had, um, broccoli and Brussels sprouts here and I had cabbages here and that worked okay I just wanted to move them I'm gonna do fewer of both those things I don't think I'm gonna do any Brussels sprouts this year I'm gonna do mostly cabbages so and a little I got kohlrabi because I saw cool purple kohlrabi seeds so I'm gonna do just this bed and I like to incorporate flowers and so I was thinking of doing cosmos here um, and you'll see why cosmos in a little bit um, I I'm trying to have all the different flowers that I love. Okay, and then here I'm hoping to put potatoes. Last year I had carrots in here, here, and here. Um, carrots are gonna go elsewhere this year. 
I'll get there. This, <laughs> this bit here, I'm thinking onions. And I'm thinking I'm just gonna put my, I let my yellow storage onions here. So I'm gonna do New York early again. Those worked pretty well for me this past year, but I think I can do better. I did them, I did carrots in the middle and onions on the side, which design wise, like just aesthetically, I thought would be really nice. But I think I, I put the carrots too close to the edge and they really shaded out my onions and I had to like dig for them. So <laughs> that could have worked a little better. So this time I'm going to just do onions in this bed. And then um, I think I'm going to do flowers here as well. I'm putting the flowers on the north side here because I don't want them shading out my crops here. Now they may or may not be taller. Um, but um, that's just a guide and that's that is why I put the directions here because for example I put the elder in the northwest corner here so that it won't shade out um, other things as it gets bigger it's actually pretty big right now um, you're gonna get most of your Sun coming from the south at least where I am here in Vermont it may be different in the southern hemisphere if you are um, in the summer, southern hemisphere let me know I'm curious so we got these raised beds in the back let me stick lawn back here just with what I'm thinking. So these are going to be regular potatoes. I also really want to try to grow sweet potatoes this year. We actually eat quite a bit of sweet potatoes. Quite a bit of. We eat quite a few sweet potatoes I guess is <laughs> a good way to, to put that. Um, and I want to try doing Ruth style. Ruth? I want to try doing Ruth stout style beds for the sweet potatoes and I might also stick some regular potatoes back here as well. So this section back here I'm going to have um, it probably will be more than four hay bales. I do have um, a master one of these where it's like this is to scale But I don't have the dimensions written down on here I have one that's on you know graph paper with the boxes So I'll double check how many straw bales I need to order at the beginning of the year um, because I can get those from a local nursery delivered so um, I'm gonna do that here. So this is gonna be sweet potato and regular potato these, this is standing for potato, guys, not anything else. Uh, uh, sweet potato and potato, uh, Ruth Stout beds. Right, so that will be back here, and I'll live, I leave a little bit of room around the elder here. I do actually have um, violets and strawberries planted around here, and there's a, there's a comfrey in here. I am just let that be, and it's just kind of wild. Okay, um, here, since I'm here, this was where my strawberries were, and then last spring I went to uncover them because I had put straw over them, and it looked like most of them had been eaten. Um, they'd either been eaten or rotted. They were, they were basically gone. So that was really sad, um, and I didn't do anything with this bed last year. It is still full of weeds. But this year I think it's going to be a cut flower bed. So um, you'll notice I'm going to do this a couple times, but like I'm not going to specifically put on this master plan like this cut flower here and this one here and this one here. I'm I'm going to probably plan out some ideas ahead of time on a separate piece of paper. I have an idea here this is going to be mostly uh, warm season flowers that will be planted after um, our last, after a thread of frost is gone. But I'm not gonna on this page, like for example, I'm not going like this is where the kohlrabi is and such. This that's not what this planning is for, and it's honestly a little bit more fun for me when I'm planting to kind of figure out where in the bed things are going. So that's why I'm doing that. So this is gonna be cut flowers. I'm just gonna put warm here, and you'll see. I'm gonna distinguish that from my cool flowers because I have some of those going in as well. If um, I'll link here as well, I had a I I made a video about my fall plans, and I did do some of that. I didn't accomplish all of it, but um, as far as cool flowers, I will link that video here. Because um, I also, if you want a seed hall, there's a <laughs> nice flower seed hall there. Okay, I'm kind of moving this way. Let me come back here. This is the only area here, This I, I still intend for this to be a, a tunnel at some point, but I'm not really sure what I'm doing with it or, or um, when I'm gonna get it set up. I do have some posts that I can put in, but I'm not sure about it. So I'm not planning for that right now, and I'm hoping at some point this year I'll, I'll figure that out. Um, I'm hoping here to actually put some vining flowers. So they'll just be along the uh, fence here. Um, with, you know, the gate, the gate is here. And um, this, yeah, and then I'm hoping to put some sort of table here. I have a couple tables. So I'm hoping to put one there because then I have a spot to sit and put stuff down and, uh, you know, like, 
hot things or, I don't know, <laughs> just in general. I think it'd be good to have a little seating area there. So I'm hoping I can stick a small table there and then have the vining flowers there I think would be really nice. Oh, and maybe cucumelons. Maybe, we're gonna, I'm thinking about that. Um, but I could do like a, I have a climbing nasturtium, so I could do climbing nasturtium and cucumelons possibly. I also, this is not relevant to uh, plants per se, but if you have kids, I also am gonna, I'm hoping to put a box or, or two back here with some, just some stuff for my toddler to play with while I'm in the garden. The, the goal is for the gates to work. This year they did not work to keep her in or to keep animals out. They had a, I had failure on the gates. Let me try again. Hopefully the gates will keep her in and then I'll have some stuff here to occupy her so she doesn't, um, I mean, she, she can work with me as well but sometimes she just wants to dig. So I think I'm gonna do like a box with sand in it for her to dig in. So she's not digging in my beds once I've planted in them. And then maybe some other toys for her to occupy her for a little while, while I'm working in, in, in the potager. The baby um, will be on my back. So that is the plan for that. Um, so I thought this could be like a kind of a, an area where we store that stuff. It's also nice that it's kind of on the north side and out of the way here. Okay, let me go, let me go down this way here. So I'm actually gonna turn this into just like one big bed. This right now is covered. I didn't use it this year and I didn't end up covering it with the landscape fabric, um, which I kind of wish I had gotten just like a giant tarp or something, but I didn't. So it's where it is right now. This still has lots of tall grass. So I'll be coming through and weed whacking and prepping those beds and stuff. But this is gonna be just one giant bed and this is going to have my corn and um, pumpkins and maybe beans, but I'm not sure. We'll, we'll see if we could try that again. Um, and I might try to keep the corn more on this, on this end, more on the western side. That way it's only shading like this section here and not over here, back here. Um, and I am going to put, um, let's see, amaranth, I think. Amaranth and sunflowers along here for cutting. I'm hoping to do some succession planting with sunflowers, just a few. It's it's mainly for cutting for me, but again, I love I loved making bouquets last year, and my goal this year is to see if I can make a bouquet every week um, and see how many weeks I can do that for um, during the my growing season. And I also wanna give away more bouquets. I did make one for um, a, a pregnant friend this summer, um, but yeah. I want, I want more, I, want, I like doing it, so <laughs> I enjoy it. I enjoy cutting and do all that. So anyway, sunflowers, succession sewing. And then celosia here, same thing. I got, I got a bunch of flower seeds for cut, <laughs> cut flowers, so. And since we're moving around here, I think I wanna try to do little pumpkins. I have, I think, Jack B. Little and Baby Boo. So Jack B. Little is like a little orange one and Baby Boo I think is a little white one. And I'm hoping to climb them up the fence there. And then I'm going to do, so this is my, my house is over here on, on this side, on the eastern side of the garden. And so we, out my kitchen window and dining room window, we see, uh, you know, this, this side here. Can you see me? Let me just make sure. We see this side here. And um, I often use this gate uh, when I'm going out. But I, I use this one most often because my driveway's here when I have my um, garden cart or other like tools that I have to wheel in because I come down the driveway that way. But if I'm just walking out to the garden myself, this is the gate I most use. And I'm gonna put um, zinnias here. And I think I'm gonna do the queen line zinnias because I I love them. I had, a, I had a big patch back here this past year that I cut from so much, it was glorious. So um, patches there as we enter since we're right here. Let me talk about these beds. These beds are actually new raised beds that I set up this past uh, fall. They actually already have a few things planted in them, mainly because um, this one completely and parts of this one are gonna be my cool flower, cut flower beds. Um, so cool flowers, if you don't know, um, there's a book by, I think it's Lisa Mason Ziegler. I'll have it linked in the description box below. And um, it's just flowers that are hardy annuals, which means they can withstand some uh, colder temperatures. They can withstand some frost. Some of them can withstand my winter temperatures. And so what I do is I plant them in the fall, or theoretically, this is what I do. This is the first year I'm trying this. And then um, they'll, come, uh, they'll come back in the spring and I'll get flowers sooner. 
And then alternatively, if they can't survive all the temperatures, the, the my low here, but they can still survive, you know, pretty cool temperatures, I could just plant them, I think it's four to six or six to eight, depending on the flower, weeks before I my average last frost. So they're out there getting frost as seedlings. And some of them direct sown as well. So that is what these beds are mainly for. So I actually already have some in here and we'll see if they survive. So, um, so this is all cool flower bed basically. And, um, and the stuff that's not in there, there's spaces, um, for things that are going to go in, in the spring as well. I have pansies I put along the edges here. So I'm hoping those will be really cute along the edges. Um, it's it's about 11 inches tall, the raised bed, so they're not super tall there. Uh, let's see, and then here, I, I have more space for flowers here. Um, I, do, I, I do have a few in there. I think like my nigella, which is love in a mist, and possibly, possibly Iceland poppies are there. Um, and I don't know what the germination is on those, so I'm gonna probably direct so a few more this spring. And then I might put some more um, cool or not cut flowers here. But then this half is going to be for my root veggies. So this, I'm going, I did a lot of carrots last year, which um, we didn't, they got huge. And I didn't thin them. And then we didn't eat them or preserve them all. I need, I need some good carrot preserving recipes. I will try storing them. I did try storing some and I just, I didn't do a good job about it. So I need to work on my storage for that. Um, but I, anyway, I am going to plant fewer carrots this year. So there's going to be, it's, I think it's going to be mainly carrots and rutabaga, maybe a few golden beets. Um, and then here I actually have some fever few that I did also fall so as a cool flower. And so we'll see if that comes up. Uh, this is my pea and bean TB. And I love that I do peas in the early, uh, this is like sugar snap peas I put on here. I'm just gonna put sugar. And they're, they're garden snacks, they don't really make it inside. And then um, I grew a black runner bean here last year. And I, I'm just gonna put bean for right now, I'll decide the exact variety later. I might do the same thing again. Um, let me move to this bed. So this is a quince tree here. We got one quince last year that grew, but then before I could harvest it, because I was trying to figure out when to harvest it, uh, a critter got it. So that was a little sad, but we'll have more years with quince. Um, and I do have uh, daffodils and alliums, a bunch, um, planted around here. And the daffodils do keep coming back for me. So um, I expect to see them again this year and hopefully the alliums will as well. And then, uh, but they'll die, they'll die back. Um, I think June, like they last definitely through May, probably into uh, the alliums into June. So by July they'll die, die back. And I want to put something at least around the edges. And last year I tried nasturtium and the idea was to have it like kind of overflowing there. And I really like that idea. It just didn't, it didn't work hundred percent. So I'm still debating on exactly what I want to do here. So, um, I have some ideas. I do really want to have something coming around. Um, so this, this is subject, this is very subject to change, but maybe some alyssum. Um, I could do some chamomile. I could do some uh, thyme. Although the thyme here for me is a perennial, so I have to keep that in mind. These other ones are not, although the chamomile will reseed, or sometimes does it, it hasn't always. And, um, or try and nasturtium again, or just do a combination of these things. So that's what I'm thinking there. Then around here, I'm hoping to try a decorative thing here. I had, last year I had marigolds growing in rows um, alternating with cabbage and the marigolds were gorgeous. So I think what I want to do this year, and I got a couple new varieties, is along these outside edges here, plant marigolds and here, also up here. I have a couple different varieties. So what I'm still deciding is do I want to like mix varieties together? So all three of these would be the same, but they would be a mix. Um, Cause I have like the French petite, um, which I think I think the French one was the one that had like um, almost multiple colors within it, like from a deep red to an orange. And then I got ones that are yellow and I got ones that are orange. So I might either do a mix or I could do a different variety along each edge. I don't know yet. So, but either way, um, we're gonna say marigolds here. Moving on. 
Um, and then I'm going to put some squashes or curcubits, squash family things in here. Let me just say, I'm gonna do some of my smaller squash in here. So I think mainly this year it's gonna be acorn and spaghetti. And then they can just kind of ramble around in here. And then in this one, I was thinking melons. So I have watermelons, a couple different varieties, as well as one, it's a Noir de Carme melon, which I think is kind of like a cantaloupe. It's got orange flesh and I like black on the outside. And then I thought I'd put some zucchini in here and thinking about it, it may not take up this whole bed. So I may need to stick something else in here, but I will, I will keep that in mind because there are some random things that sometimes I don't know where they're going. Now, this is my edible flower bed here. I started, I did that to some extent. It was, it was accessible to some extent last year. Um, this is my bench, which I have not made yet, but it's actually on my list for today to get that started. So hopefully I'll be able to do that. Uh, let's see. I am losing light, so hang on. Sorry for the lighting change. The, there's a big window and I think the sun went behind a bunch of clouds and changed on me. So I have a bergamot here. I actually forgot last year I put in some violets here and I really am hoping those come back. And then I, and I, oh, I think I also seeded some in the fall, some bachelor's buttons in here. So we'll see if those come back as well. But otherwise I'm just, this is my edible flower bed. I'm just gonna label it as such and I'm gonna go ahead and stick things like borage and nasturtiums and again bachelor's budget but bachelor's buttons calendula um so there's some basil that i stick, stuck in there last year so and this is a if i haven't said already this is a um a bergamot or a bee balm it's a it's a purple light purple variety um so those are all edible that's really fun hopefully i'll have the bench in there this year and then i can sit amongst my flowers and it's it's backless so you can look either at the quince tree over here or at the herbs over here. And this is generally my herb section. So I have my herb circle going pretty well at this point. I've got some, um, I'm not gonna label them all here, but just to give you an idea, some perennials here, including thyme and sage and lemon balm. And I put a lavender in there last year, so hopefully that survives well. Um, and I also planted a St. John's wort, which was really tiny last year, but hopefully will come back. And then I have some that are just annuals that um, the calendula reseeded itself last year, um, but I'll also, um, I can direct sow it if I don't see any. And then some chamomile and some holy basil. Those are not perennial here, so I will have to, um, either they'll have to reseed themselves or I'll have to add them back each year. Uh, over here I have both anise and official hyssop. I moved them next to each other this past spring and a catnip here. And then I just, um, and oh, and here I have, um, this is supposed to be culinary herbs. I'm just gonna mark it as such. And um, I did not fill these up as much as I had intended to last year. And I think, it, it, then they got full of weeds. Like this bed was so full of Queen Anne's lace and I kind of just left it. And so this year, I think it's important that I fill them up faster in the spring and, and hopefully that will help them um, not get as weedy. Um, so I, I do know of some things I want to, like I, I want to put some echinacea in here. So I, I do have some ideas of things I want to put. Oh, I definitely want to put like a few chives here. I thought it'd be fun to have a border of chives. And otherwise I have a, I, I've started a list, I'll keep working on it, of culinary and other herbs that I want to put in these beds. And then when I get there, I'll just look at it and stick them in, uh, keeping in mind height and such, like dill gets pretty tall, so it'll probably go towards the middle and so on. This bed, last year was ended up being one of my favorite beds but I don't think it was anything like I had planned um if you've just watched or recently watched the video you, can, you probably remember better than I do what I had actually planned to do in this bed but it is not at all I don't think what I did so what I ended up having is sunflowers here and amaranth here and then I did zucchinis in the middle I actually planted some nasturtiums with the zucchinis and the zucchinis got so big that it, they just disappeared um and I loved it but I'm gonna do it a little differently. I'm gonna, as you heard, zucchinis over here, sunflowers and amaranth over here. So, um, but I liked kind of the mishmash that it was, if that makes any sense. And I have some random things I wanna put in here. So I don't know exactly how this is gonna end up looking, but things I want this year, we're gonna try celery. We're gonna try a pink stemmed celery because 
if I'm going to grow celery, my son loves celery, if I'm going to grow it, it's kind of more fun to grow <laughs> the pink variety, um, as well as fennel. I may put um, some uh, bean teepees in here for beans or just other flowers. Um, I just put that over my celery fennel notes, that's fine. Um, and then I'm just thinking other like herbs, flowers, and greens as I want to put in here. Um, it's going to be a loose bed again, but for that general, general things there. Um, yeah, so that's what that's going to be. And I'm, again, leaving that, leaving that a little bit loose. I might, you know, if there's some flowers I really want to grow, but I don't have another place to put them, that might be a good location. All right, let me move. I know I've got a lot of the edges still to do, but let me talk about this. This past year I grew, um, let's see, I had Three rows of tomatoes and one row of cucumbers and these are just um, tea posts with fencing on them that I grew and, and that works perfectly fine for my cucumbers and my tomatoes it held up it held up really well to them and they got pretty big they're pretty big plants and I'm just going to do that again this year I'm, I may move them next year I don't worry overly much about rotating in this space um, unless I see a problem um, and I haven't seen a problem and, and, and honestly these, this was pumpkins the year before last so this will only be the second year of me growing them in this space so I'm leaving them again for this year I've got tomatoes tomatoes of course deciding what varieties of tomatoes I'm going to grow is the hard part because I'm trying not to grow too many <laughs> so there's that then cucumbers here I'm definitely gonna grow more silver slicers this year. Those were my favorite. Okay, and then along here, last year I had snapdragons and I'm gonna have snapdragons here again. I really loved those and how they turned out. And I actually planted a fall crop of snapdragons there. And um, I'm not sure if they're gonna survive or not. It's kind of an ex a cool flower experiment because I think I'm kind of on the line with snapdragons and also they they were a lot smaller than I think they should have been when I put them in the ground, but they are there. So, uh, snapdragons there. I'm going to start some to put in there, and then if they these ones come back, I'll stick them somewhere else. <laughs> That's my plan. Um, and then here I had cosmos last year, and this year I want to do zinnias here. Um, I just I do love cosmos, but I find that I use zinnias much more often for cutting than I do cosmos. And so I will, that's one of the reasons I said like this is gonna be cosmos. I'm going to put cosmos in other areas, but just not as many. And I'm gonna have a lot of zinnias. And I, I've already thought through like what varieties I'm putting of these here. Um, that's on a separate piece of paper. And I will show you, this is actually my, my garden journal is here, I'm shaking things, sorry. This is my garden journal here and I am going to film a tour for you. I'm still working through it a little bit, um, trying to make it all pretty and stuff and work in it before the season really starts and then it's gonna become a lot more utilitarian. But anyway, I have sketches of some of these things in there, including what varieties of snapdragons and zinnias. And one of the reasons I'm putting queen lime zinnias, zinnias here is because they're not over here. Um, I hope you guys like these details. <laughs> this is how I think, just sharing my thoughts with you. Um, okay, so snapdragons here, zinnias here. So when you walk in here, you get all these flowers again, which is nice. And I think I am going to put cosmos here because I do still love them. Maybe my apricot lemonade ones, those ones are my favorite. And then here's gonna be pumpkins again. They were pumpkins last year and those grew really well. I used um, pantyhose and I didn't see any borer issues and so we're going to try that again. Um, of course they were in a different location as well so that could have been part of it so hopefully it being in the same location as the previous year won't be more problematic and we'll just see how that goes. Along the edge here I'm actually, I'm going to do fewer pumpkins than I did in this area than I did last year because I'm going to have more space over here for pumpkins. And so I'm also going to do a row of stock here. And I've been thinking about this. I'm going to try this this year. Um, I think it's beautiful and I've been told it smells really good. And so I really want to try growing it for cut flowers, but I also know it's not a cut and come again. So what I love about the snapdragons and the zinnias, especially the zinnias and the cosmos, 
is their cut and come again flower. So they're great to have here because they will keep blooming. Whereas the stock, once I cut it, it may be just gone. So um, we're gonna see how that goes. That's another cool flower though that I'm gonna grow. And so if it's done towards the middle of the year, I can always put something else in here, uh, in that spot that's fast growing. Okay, so those are the big middle beds. I think I just gotta talk about the sides, right? Let me move back here. Um, I'm going to put climbing beans back here. I did not, I did not get my a lot of my climbing green beans in this year. Um, I was gonna do them in this section here. I just, I never finished prepping that area, so that was a little disappointing. This was peas um, this past year. Yeah, this was peas in the spring, which I did get some peas from, which was exciting. Um, but it also got pretty weedy, so <laughs> that's what that is. And then um, over here, this section here, I'm gonna do eggplant. Okay, eggplant and peppers along this corner here. Um, probably just a few of each plant, each type. I'll have, probably have a couple. I, have, I know I have two different varieties of eggplants that I grew two years ago and I liked, and I have a couple varieties of peppers, so we'll see. There won't be a lot of them. Um, and I do want to interplant this. Um, with herbs and possibly also red onions. So. As I said earlier over here, I'm gonna grow my New York Early, which are yellow storage onions here, because that's what I use a bulk of in cooking. But I do like some red onion. Um, I think if you're gonna, I prefer them if I'm gonna do any raw onions and salads or anything like that. And I also like to pickle them. So I did pickle, um, I think more than a few, but not a lot. I, I, I pickled several jars um, this fall and I we love them on, you know, like, tacos and burgers and, anyway, and so that's basically what my red onions are for so I need to sneak them in in places and I just I really like the idea of interplanting in there so they might be interplanted in several areas to be honest and then this whole section here is gonna be um, bush beans here um, I have a couple different varieties uh, dragon's tongue is the one I've mainly grown in the past but I've been really I've been on a green Guys, actually, I'm gonna do some with dinner tonight. Fresh green beans roasted with some olive oil, salt, and some garlic in there, like chunks of garlic. Oh my goodness. So that, <laughs> I'm really hoping to get more fresh green beans this year to do that. And I probably will also try to freeze some if I have enough. Um, but those, you can't really, ro they don't come out well roasted. So the fresh green, green beans is where it's at. Um, I was able to find some at the co-op and I was very excited when I was grocery shopping. Anyway probably mostly green beans. I might throw in some other like cannellini beans. This is actually quite a long space and you can put the bush beans quite close together. So um, we'll see that. And then there might also be some beans like in here or in here. So that's the fun of actually putting things in the ground. Okay, sorry, I get distracted and chatty. Hopefully you like that. Uh, ground cherries are going in here. Last year I just had four plants along here and I actually, we ate a lot of them in the garden, as we had the year before. Uh, but I did actually, my friend helped me, we did collect enough to make, was it one or two? It might just be one. <laughs> one and a little maybe, like one and a half little jars of ground cherry jam and it is delicious. And yeah, I think it was one and a half because I, I used the half immediately. I didn't actually can it, I just put it in the fridge. And the other one's canned and I haven't opened it. <laughs> I know it's yummy. So I would like to grow enough for that. So there's gonna be ground cherries here and I'm also um, strongly considering putting some ground cherries in the berry garden as well. So I'm not planning that out for you because that is, it's a lot more perennials and um, and so there's just not as much planning to be done and it's, it's a lot more random. But I do like think about things like that. So when I'm starting the ground cherries, I'm gonna figure out how many I can fit here as well as there. Um, so that'll be good. Um, if you've seen any of my berry, my berry garden tours, I'm thinking of putting a plant or two, we'll see, in between each of the honey berries because those are growing pretty slowly and I think it'll help suppress weeds. Is also, they're also very cool looking. They kind of look like berries, so. Okay, and here in the middle here, I'm gonna put more flowers. I haven't decided. Those little, those little 
couple things. I kind of just know her flowers, and I'll decide what kind later. Oh, and here I was, and more, let's see. Here I was thinking I hadn't put in a spot for leeks. So these might along here be leeks as well as red onions. We shall see. I'm gonna put question marks there. Um, more flowers here, because you know, flowers everywhere. And then here I wanna put pea, my peas, my um, shelling peas along the fence here. And I'm going to put greens early greens in front of them. There'll be some gaps for me to like actually get to the peas. Um, but I had chard growing in front of my peas last year and they grew really well. And they kind of are small when you're first picking the peas, at least in my experience. And I could probably, it's pretty narrow here, I could probably just reach over them. So I'm gonna come along the other side if I need to. I think that's everything. Let me just quickly write 2022 up here. You know what I'm doing here. Um, hopefully this was helpful to you to see kind of my chaotic thoughts on uh, what what I'm growing here. I didn't know here. I actually think I'm going to grow um, white zinnias here because they also didn't quite fit in my plan over here. And um, I just wanted some for carnivorians and I have some seeds. So again, this will change throughout the season. So if you want to see what happens in the potager this season, please subscribe. Um, and I'm hoping to have more videos out for you this year. It's a goal every year, but as my kids get older, hopefully we'll get we'll get closer and closer, get more and more videos out. Tell me, what are you planning for your gardens this year? Do you have a kitchen garden, a potager, just a tiny raised bed or container gardens? I used to, I started with uh, containers on a deck and this was my vision. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I know it's a lot and most people don't need this much. It is like my, my therapy and um, what I, I love to do. So there is my plan for 2022. I hope you all stay and are well, and I will talk to you later. Until next time, happy gardening.